What's up everybody, Dre back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because he just released another newsletter. This one is called Civilian Feature. Once again, brought to us by the very generous Guinevere, the community manager at Void Interactive. Before we hop into this newsletter, be sure to like up the video. And if you like content like Ready or Not, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell for more content like this. And with that all being said, let's get into the newsletter here. Let's start with the introduction here. Hey everyone, it's time for the 21st bi-weekly briefing for Ready or Not, in which we'll be taking a look at some of the animations for the civilian AI as well as the process by which we're able to create them. That's interesting because if I remember correctly, they said that they were um, scanning people into the game. Like, they scanned like over 100 and... 20 to 50 people at some point. Did they just like say, nah, forget that. We're just gonna make our own people into the game? Because if that's the case, that's interesting. Wonder whether they decided to change that. Well, anyways, Unreal Engine 4's MetaHuman technology. I'm assuming that's what they're gonna be using to make these uh, new civilians. Never heard of it. Civilian models and animations. A vital element of the police shooter is the role the civilians play in it. They are what set police shooters aside from other games in the genre, having to account for protecting, managing, and controlling civilians in a potentially hostile or dangerous environment with suspects adds another layer of complexity to each mission. Preparation becomes so much more important. Breaching a room means minding your shots and acting quickly to ensure that in the chaos of a firefight, innocent lives aren't lost. A suspect with a hostage requires an entirely different approach than one who's in a room alone. Because of the importance of civilians to Ready or Not's gameplay loop, having them contribute to the player's immersion is top priority. From their animations to their appearance, to how they interact with the player, every civilian is crafted with their own background, motivations, desires, and behavior. Interesting. The immersion level is gonna be off the charts. I can already feel it. Just imagine trying to calm down the civilians and like a bunch of them are trying to like run away or stay where they are or not even cooperate. And you're like... I am the law. That's definitely going to be a thriller of a time. But anyways, up next there is a video here that's called Civilian Preview. I'm going to show it off here first and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So uh, let's go. So that was that. Let's go ahead and analyze this little clip here. So the clip opens up on what looks like two or three SWAT officers. I can only see one that's holding a listen lethal shotgun. I think there's actually a trap on that door right there. I see like a little red wire right there. I think that's a trap. Uh, I believe this is also the gift shop area. And you can see a civilian in the window right there. The civilian, I believe, is wearing a beanie with some sort of uh, polo shirt, I think. Uh, anything else in this scene? I can't really see too much. Actually, there might be a fourth SWAT officer. I could just barely see that one on the right there. But I think that's pretty much for this first scene here it zooms into the civilian and then it cuts to the next scene where it's showing a swat officer holding a pepper ball gun or a paintball gun however you want to call it you can see a shadow of another swat officer on the right there the camera zooming into this door what's interesting about this door here is that it explodes but i'm a bit curious as to what actually explodes it because i don't see any c2 charges on this door so obviously that explosion had to come from somewhere and it probably came from the other side of the door maybe it was a bomb that was planted by uh, the bad guys maybe that's interesting because i don't see any i don't see a c2 2 charge anywhere on this door. Also, destructible doors. Pretty neat. But it explodes and then it cuts to the next scene here. Again, what the hell exploded it? Oh well. The next area, it looks like we're in some sort of gym area. You gotta remember that this is the hotel. And the hotel is ridiculously big. It has a gift shop, gym area. You can see a couple of cans on the floor. I can't really read what it says on the cans. But there's this guy here. He doesn't look like he's affiliated with any of the factions. But that jacket does remind me of the jacket that was featured in the gas station map at one point. Maybe he's a part of that gang? Who knows? But at this very moment, he looks like a civilian to be. He doesn't look like one of those cartel guys. You know, he is kind of wearing a yellow jacket. It's very... You can really see that. Why would you wear a yellow jacket instead of a gym? I think it's weird. But anyways, nothing too crazy going on here. So uh, let's cut to the next scene here. They're inside of this meat locker. You can see two chefs. Or maybe one's a waiter and the other is a chef. I don't know. And two SWAT officers about to go into the next room here. They're obviously on the floor and cuffed because in this game you're supposed to cuff everybody because nobody's, you know, innocent until proven guilty or whatever it's called. It's kind of funny how it's easy for the chef to freaking maintain his 
his hat on his head. I do see a gun on the floor. Is that a gun on the floor? I guess I see a gun on the floor right there at the bottom left. And it looks like there's a SWAT officer to the left right here that's about to pick it up or something. The SWAT officers that are next to the door obviously have some sort of paintball gun. And uh, I think there's a second one behind him. He has a he has a shotgun. Let's see. The camera is zooming up towards the two SWAT officers that are by the door. It looks like there's a red team SWAT officer because you can see it by the red line on his back there. And then as it gets a little closer, it cuts to the next scene and we see some sort of very armed guy walk past the screen right there. That's not a SWAT officer. That looks like a cartel member wearing MLO gear. If you don't know who the MLO are, they're basically the people that are featured in the multiplayer and only the multiplayer. But this guy looks like he's wearing the revamped version of the MLO armor. Interesting. And how you can tell it's a cartel member. I mean, I'm Mexican and you usually see Mexicans that have like a colored shirt on top and then you see like a white shirt underneath. I used to wear those a lot when I was younger. You can tell by the sleeve right there. In fact, I even think I know what this freaking character model is. It's the one that was in the trailer. Yeah, this one. I think. He just now has armor on, which is kind of cool. So that's obviously like a cartel member. But man, he's packing. Look, he's got a freaking face shield. He's got freaking body armor. Yeah, that guy's not going to be easy to take down. Let's see, like a good shot. Maybe shoot him in the legs. Go escape from Tarkov meta. But look at everything else. We see a bellboy cowering in fear right there. We see a glimpse of the current alpha under NDA sitting on that couch right there. We see a white supremacist member that's dead on the floor. Is that, I can't tell if that's blood or if that's like an actual piece of carpet, like red carpet. I'm pretty sure that's blood, but that's a shit ton of blood. The camera pans in and it zooms over and you can see a bunch of civilians. You can see a cartel member in the back right there. He's like trying to like, I think he's putting up a, a rigged explosive right there. So can AI actually put up explosives? Like when you're in game? That's kind of cool. I still see a couple of civilians that are down there. Some of them are moving. And, uh, yeah, not too, not too much there. Also, I feel like if that guy wasn't a cartel member, this cartel guy that's planting something on the door probably would have shot at him. So, uh, yeah. Cuts to the next scene. We see a SWAT officer with a less than lethal shotgun looking into the bar area. Remember, you could tell it's the bar area because everything's green. And it looks like they tossed something in there that explodes. I'm gonna assume it's a flashbang, but damn, that knocked a lot of shit around. Unless that was an actual grenade. I, mean, I don't know, maybe maybe the bad guys have freaking explosives of their own or throwables. Who knows? But it's kind of cool that you could actually see. Actually, I think that's a piece of the door that just went fleeing. Yeah, okay, so it's a piece of the door that just went fleeing. So that means that they probably destroyed this door and then they tossed in a flashbang or a sting. But anyways, moving on to the next thing here, we are in the bar area, again, assuming that we just cleared it out. It's the same two SWAT officers with the less than lethal shotguns and the pepper ball gun. And there is a civilian here that's obviously in handcuffs because, you know, they put everybody in handcuffs. But you can see a TV screen that's actually static right there. It's pretty interesting. And that's where it kind of ends. So overall, pretty neat little clip here. Definitely shows a little more of a hotel and it definitely looks a lot darker than what I remembered. That's pretty nice. All right, that's that. Let's go ahead and push into the next thing here. An essential tool in making sure each character is unique in their appearance has been Unreal Engine 4's MetaHuman technology, which has allowed us to greatly speed up the process of creation for every character in the game. Yeah, I remember them saying that they were scanning people into the game, so I guess now they're just doing this new system, I guess? You know, it really sounds like they are revamping the game again, and I hope that's not the case. I mean, I'm not against revamps, but <sighs> Ready or Not really doesn't need it, as far as I can tell. But uh, anyways, in the images below, you'll see an example of a character that we were able to put together together in just a few minutes. By utilizing MetaHuman, we can match the appearances of characters to the descriptions and histories our writing time has made for them. So they're showing off this picture here that just looks like a normal dude. A guy that's obviously on vacation because he's at a hotel for some reason. This is just a side shot and yeah, I mean, it looks it looks good. It doesn't look bad. Moving on to the next picture here, it shows the front of him and yeah, I mean, he doesn't look too bad. He definitely doesn't look like a, a scanned in person if you compare it to like the previous pictures that I've seen on their, uh, their Twitter at some point. Actually, I think I have some of the pictures on my computer now I think about it. Yeah, like, let's compare this scanned in photo of a person to this guy. So yeah, there's your comparison right there. Let's move on to the last thing in the newsletter here. In conclusion, this brings us to the end of our 21st bi-weekly briefing, this time focusing on civilian models and animations within the game. And yeah, that pretty much does it for the newsletter. What are your guys' thoughts? Honestly, it's interesting because I've noticed that it seems like Void Interactive seems to be revamping a lot of things, which kind of tells me that they're redoing the game again. And I'm hoping that that's not going to cut into the time where we can actually, you know, try out the beta, which it kind of already did if you think about it. When this update dropped, a lot of people in the supporter edition were not very happy because, you know, they obviously want a playable update, especially in the alpha. So I'm hoping that we'll get it sometime soon because they honestly don't have a real reason to not give it to us, the supporters, but I guess we'll see. And uh, yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? I think that this is overall an A-OK -okay newsletter. We definitely got to see a lot of cool stuff here. And yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? I'm going to cut it off here. If you guys enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Ready or Not, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below.
below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. Or if you want to help me out directly, then there is a join button on the channel now. It's actually great because you can actually support me directly. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. Just stick around. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.